Hello and welcome everybody, our proper variant, and this is Crusader Kings 3's dev diary number 105, the 1.7 Bastion update. This isn't the dev diary where you see the changelog or where the update comes out, but they are finally, finally talking about what we can actually look forward to. They've always done this kind of, sort of, you know, with the last dev diary, for example, about AI, there was also another one that I didn't cover on the channel about the question of the populist faction, but this dev diary, trust me, is a bit thicker. It's a bit meatier, and I'm very happy about that, because, man... It's been some time, right? Uh, let's just jump straight into it. I gotta tell you, I think there's a lot in here, a lot to like, a lot to really be excited for, so let's just check it out. Today we'll talk a bit about the free 1.7 Bastion update and what new things it will bring to the game. Today we will not be talking about Redacted, which will be released together with the update. This clearly to me sounds like there will be a DLC with it, meaning we actually are entering a bit of a phase of a more regular DLC schedule. Again, you know, of course, whether you enjoy the DLC itself, who knows? You know, we know nothing about the DLC as, as is, but I gotta tell you, with how far DLCs were apart so far, it is quite refreshing for me personally to see something this year. I was worried that we'd see something, you know, in 2023. And now they already talked about the AI, of course, in the last dev diary. I was quite happy about it. I think many were quite happy about it. The one big thing, and I also told them about this in the Discord forum. There, there's a forum there now where you can leave reports and such and I told them that you know when it comes to the Holy Wars I would like some interface work there but everything else was really promising and then they also talked about the populist faction they buffed it but they also gave vassals a better response to it so I'm quite excited for that as well and now here we have the actual free upcoming content let's check it out so first, we have the character memories. While the characters often get up to quite memorable things in our games, there's, uh, there has up to now not been a way to keep track of exactly what, when and with whom each character has had a particular experience. What we've done in the new update in order to show more clearly how alive the game world is, is to introduce memories to characters. Characters will remember things that happened to them, from important things like the births of their children, important battles, deaths of close ones and succession, to more mundane things like the event interactions with other characters during their childhood. Right, uh, this is a really cool feature, this is basically a much much more extended version of a mod that I'm playing with, Biography, a great mod as well made by Fun, uh, a modder that also is making the Shogunate mod, but this one goes quite a couple of steps further, you're gonna see this in a second yourself. This image right here shows the memories of the Maharaja right here, these are your significant memories. Memories are fleeting, fickle things, yet still precious and irreplaceable, given enough time all memories will fade into oblivion. So this is a different system, not only is it not just a chronicle, that you can trace, you know, and it sort of fills that role, it sort of doesn't, because of, uh, you know, as you can see here already, uh, it's not intended to be a permanent place for something necessarily, but let's take a quick look at this. I became friends with Samantha Narasanayaka of Tagadur, uh, the marriage is in here, my wife has died, my daughters are born, look at all these new symbols right there, it also shows when you became a rival, and, you know, when you end the rival, it shows when it started a war and when it uh, ended a war, all of these things are now in here, and all of these aren't just here for you to look at, all of these actually have a purpose. Let's explore that. At any time, you can view the memories of your character as well as non-private memories of other characters. So, basically, secrets and, you know, for example, who they love, that sort of stuff is not accessible from the outside, which, again, not a chronicle, right? This is more there so that you can see from your perspective what other characters were up to and what you were up to and, you know, basically helping you in role-playing. This lets you quickly get an idea of not only what a character is like, but also how they got there. One can think of it as a feature, somewhat similar to the character history that we had in EO Rome many years ago. One important difference to a character history, though, is that over time, some memories will fade away, while others will remain. For player characters and characters likely to become player characters, we err on the side of keeping memories longer, mostly because you are more likely to have a need of them as the game progresses. Uh, you can take a look at this we, with the icon that is the book icon that we saw in the last dev diary, and then you get this window that we already saw a bit earlier. Uh, you can see here, you know, he became friends with somebody, for some reason, somebody threw a surprise birthday party for this character. Very, very interesting, a surprise birthday party. There seems to be content here, uh, whether it's in the free patch, but they don't really mention it otherwise, so I have to assume this might be DLC. There seems to be content here that is much more personal, right? Because otherwise, how would you uh, throw somebody a surprise birthday party? Then you see right here a picnic with Kutulun. Um, my rival died in her sleep, so the actual death reason is even written here. My mother Sati died of old age, also written here. My father Yuchidai drank himself to death. Sipelma and I became rivals. My daughter Kutulun was born, and so on and so forth. Uh, my sister Doke is drowned right here, and you can see this goes 35 years back, so that is quite the amount of time. Very happy to see this, and I have to tell you, no matter how I look at this, uh, you need to remember that this isn't just a chronicle, because I was going through this and I was uh, saying to myself, okay, 
Uh, obviously, this is a great feature. Biography is already doing this, but what makes it special? And we're going to see that here in a second. Memories are not only there as a log for the player to enjoy, however, the new system allows us to make use of memories that a character has both to trigger content and to make use of a uh, use of in an event. This means that you may now find memories used in content that previously had to be vague. An assassin might not actually uh, might now actually cite a specific slight you committed against the employer, for instance. What, is also, uh, what this also means is that we are now able to create new content that is based entirely on your character having a certain type of memory or sharing a memory with another character. I love this. This is uh, this is why I said earlier on this. No matter what you look at, uh, how you look at this, this is a, a million light years further than biography was taking it as a mod. We're looking at a situation that I really, really love. You know, when I do my Let's Plays, for example, which will continue, by the way, it is now final after PDXCon. My apologies if you wanted it before, but I just got so much stuff to do. Um, but anyway, if you look at my Let's Plays, there are many, many, many comments all throughout these video series um, where people basically say, I wish I could play this way, but I can't keep track of all this stuff. It's impossible to sit down and always go, oh, wait a minute, I remember this third cousin removed, you know, what, what is happening? Um, I think that is a problem that many, many people fundamentally face and that I also face, except I can sit down and straight up just pause the game at the start of a video and just go through everything, right? That is something that most people don't do because when they play the game, they play for, for example, three hours straight. I uh, obviously, you know, actually recorded in an episodic format, making it so that I have the time between episodes to sit down and analyze. This tool right here, no matter how you play, no matter what you do, is very useful for you, uh, for you to remember things, but much, much more importantly, the game will now actively remember, or remind you, I should say. For example, you know, uh, if I remember one of my greatest enemies, you know, uh, let's say, for example, we're talking about the Azna, the dragon, the traitor, the king of Aquitaine, I knew exactly who that man was, what I did for him, what he did to me, how he betrayed basically everybody in the realm. I knew that, but the game wasn't aware. Now, the game will be aware. The game will completely remind me that, you know, maybe he ate one of my relatives, that I challenged him to several wars, that I fabricated claims, that I really acted harshly against him. I, remi I always remembered this and recalled it when it came up in gameplay, but I had to do that in my mind. That is a quintessential part of that series. With this, there is a much higher chance now that you don't have to remind yourself of what a character means to you, but that the game will do it. The fact that you can look at this and exactly know what the character was up to is really good. But the fact that these things will actually be utilized in events such as Assassins or if you have a similar memory and so on and so forth is absolutely excellent. This is a big, big change. As a role player, I'm very, very happy. You know, I, I haven't been, I've been slightly discontent. My discontent has been brewing, right? We haven't heard anything looking forward. We got no news whatsoever. It was frustrating and it still sort of is, but my God, this is content right here. I'm very happy about this. Let me definitely know what you think about the fact that now you don't even need to necessarily check the histories of these characters, but instead the events will actually stick together loosely by saying the reasoning here is of course X event and Y memory. Very interesting. Uh, here we can see just an exported memory list. I don't want to highlight too much. I just again want to highlight that the actual reason for death is mentioned here as well. I could for example imagine something like, hey, my mother died in childbirth and then one day, you know, uh, I don't know, somebody comes along and says my wife also died in childbirth. It's a difficult time, but you know, we must move on. And then you might have an interaction with them, you might make a friend, you might make an enemy, and so on and so forth. And it's not just that you made an enemy because you could, you made an enemy because you shared something. There was something that connected you. Big, big fan, I think that this is a really good step for roleplay here. My carefully written words guided Mahasamanta Mangalesi as he learned to read, quite interesting as well. My friends Akadevi and, and Maradwash threw me a surprise birthday party. Here it is again. Very curious about this. I can't exactly tell you what this is but we got a picnic we have a surprise birthday party we have a focus on the free patch where everything is related to personal interactions right I, if i had to guess i would say that the next flavor pack is something that is very much focused on personal relationships that is my personal guess anyway um right this list is very long you can see this goes from 1299 all the way back to 1246 so you can see that these memories are indeed kept for quite a, a while. And then here we have the relationship reasons. Uh, we're just going to go through the images and then here comes the text in a second. This is your friend. You discuss subjects of profound interest to Samantha Narasana, uh, Narasanayaka at Samantha Narasanayaka's feast in Tagadur. So it directly shows you the occasion and it shows you the genuine reason why you turn into friends. And of course, maybe even more importantly, you now have this icon right here so that you can very, very easily recognize your friends wherever you are. This is Dux Gregora's friend. As children, Dux Gregora's got to play with 
smooth May Antonio spinning top. Isn't that nice? It actually directly connects. Am I wrong? It doesn't it directly connect to a to an artifact. Quite interesting. This is Emperor Rainbow's uh, Rainbow's the Third's friend. Emperor uh, Rainbow the Third and Count Alba bonded over a shared hatred for King Yemeno the Third. Would you look at that? So you can even have a third party in here by basically saying, "Hey, you know what? We hate that guy, and that is what connects us. Maybe we want to plot against him going forward." This seriously. I think it's difficult to, to really grasp but or to really articulate, but this, in my opinion, is a big step forward for CK3 roleplay as it is. The biography mod for fun was so, so good, or it is so good. I'm still, of course, using it, but we have to keep in mind, yes, that biography mod is outstanding, but it doesn't directly connect anything in events. You have to do that in your head. Here, they are going one step further, and it is a big, big leap. Another addition coming with this update to further open up how things are connected in the game's world is that we have wanted to make it clearer which characters are your friends, enemies, nemeses, etc., as well as clearer why a character has a special relationship with that particular character to begin with. This is accomplished by a new set of icons in the interface to highlight relationships. Additionally, whenever a relationship is formed in the game, notif uh, the game notification will now not only say that it happened, but also why it happened. The reasons for relationships will then always be visible in its tooltip, clearly telling you how they become friends, lovers, best friends, nemeses, etc. In cases where a more advanced relation, such as best friend or nemesis, exists, we will show the reason for both the basic relationship and the more advanced one. So a best friend will keep track of both how you originally became friends and when you actually became a best friend. Very, very happy indeed. Together with character memories, this should now make it more clear what has led you to the current point in your game. A small change that brings a surprising amount of context, highlighting parts of the interpersonal simulation that can now, uh, right now be a bit hidden away. Huge fan. Seriously, this is... Man, we hadn't heard of anything in such a long time. I was worried maybe we'd get something in like January, February, something like this, but boom. All of a sudden, this comes along, and I think this will actually be a game changer uh, when it comes to how you can approach the game, to how accessible the roleplay nature of the game will be, because now the game will do the legwork rather than you do it, you know, between quote-unquote episodes of gameplay. Big, big fan of this yet again. Uh, this is King Imra's rival. King Chiuba languished in King Imra's prison. And then this is Maharaja Jaipal's rival. A rival, Kumud Narayan Nuakot Takuri eloped, provoking Maharaja Jaipal's ear, uh, ire. Very, very cool. Examples of rivalry reasons for an an uh, ongoing game. So basically here somebody died and here they eloped and that is something that they didn't like at all. Now what I gotta tell you is actually, man, um, I, uh, I hope, I gotta hope that the, I don't think the AI currently elopes. Do they use the elope scheme? I don't think they do. I, I do not believe that I've ever seen anybody elope in my entire life. If they use it now, I think we're gonna see something personal. I think we're gonna see something that is you know, that makes people much more tightly bound to you, really meaning that each character's life is much more unique. Because your sort of network of contacts will be much more interesting and tighter than it might currently be. Very interesting. Uh, revamped childhood events. So as you can see, we're not at the end yet. The stolen keg. Look what I found, Peter. An entire keg of mead. I take... I took... Oh my god, what am I looking at? Is this... France. Please stop conquering North Africa. What are you... Uh, right. I took it while the cooks weren't looking. Maud says to me, a devilish look in her eyes. What are you waiting for? Let's drink it all before anyone notices it's gone, she exclaims. A tempting offer, but is it right? A childhood event where you can get diligent, gregarious, or temperate. Child's perspective. Right. Look at that. So that is quite... All of these are pretty neat. Obviously, here, gregarious actually comes with drunkard, but, man, that could fit a character. If they start drinking this young... Interesting. Um, here we have the stolen cake, then the continue. Oh no, this is not a continuation. This is from the angle of the person that is the guardian. I caught these two hiding in the pantry. A very irate cook shouts at me, dragging my ward Peter and Morden Toe. They stole a whole keg of mead and drank most of it. Now look at them. Drunk like lords, both of them. They can barely stand, she says angrily. It seems as if my ward has fallen to peer pressure, but at least the uh, he and Maud seems to be thick as thieves. So this is between diligent, gregarious, and temperate as well, making it so... That there's no change here, I would argue. Uh, this is the event with straight up the, the same traits, except the Guardian gets to the side. So, yeah, that makes sense at the end of the day, I guess. Uh, but this is a new event, as you can see. Another thing that we wanted to revisit in order to improve and uh, on how we deal with characters in the game world is the re revamping of all existing sh uh, childhood personality events. I can't read. As well as the addition of 12 new ones. This will significantly alter what personality traits com uh, combinations are likely to appear and will open some... Uh, 
<laughs> and will open up some combinations that were previously impossible, simply due to how the old events for growing up worked. The ambition apart from adding more content to the childhood period is to have the choices you make as a guardian be more interesting, avoiding any easy best choices in any single childhood event. I think also that that makes perfect sense. You will in Grand Strategy Games, I think you will always have optimal choices, this just fundamentally exists, but I think from a design perspective you ought to sort of avoid them. So that even if you have somebody that isn't the role player, directly might make a decision that fits into role playing, you know, just because it is also the optimal choice from their point of view in particular. If something is very, very close, you know, to what is optimal, then I think people will differ in what they pick. I wonder whether they got stats on, on how many people choose which option in whatever event. I doubt it, but it would be interesting to see, I think. The new trade combinations that will be pitted against each other are, so here you have the full list, you can see they are usually fairly comparable. For example, Diligent, Gregarious, and Temperate, they're all good, although Gregarious had a chance, it seems, uh, to become drunkard as well. Then we have Brave, Stubborn, Wrathful, we have uh, Lustful and Chase, the, of course, direct opposite right there, Just, Greedy, Callous, all of these can be utilized in some interesting way. Uh, all of these are also truly terrible, uh, ex except Paranoid, I guess. But yeah, they, they sort of mixed it up in a way, I think, where they want to hide which one is the optimal option so that you're in a position of saying, hey, you know what, wait, wait a minute, this time around I'll choose A, the next time I might choose B. That makes perfect sense to me. A lesson in charity. This is from the child's perspective. Look at the poor and the downtrodden, Adeline. There are many of them, and some are truly in need. Others are mere charlatans seeking a handout. Suffragen, uh, suffragen Bishop Bachmann explains to me, bringing out a small purse of gold. Who amongst them are the most deserving of our charity today, my dear girl? He says, handing me the purse. It seems as if Bachmann wants me to hand the gold to those that need it the most. They all deserve it. We must uh, we must have more to give. The sorcerer? No, this pe uh, peasant over here. Wait, maybe. So this is fickle. This is, of course, gregarious. And, uh, sorry, this is, uh, this is, of course, generous. That is what I meant to say there. None of them. They are all low-life scum. That would be arrogant. Uh, quite interesting, honestly, here. Uh, I personally would probably regularly prefer this one. It does give you stress as the child, though. Interesting, interesting thought indeed. And then here we have the other side of it, but as the guardian. Bachmann brought my daughter Adeline to the market today. Adeline was to hand out arms to the poor and needy, to learn about charity and a ruler's plight to the less fortunate. The scatterbrained child couldn't decide who to give the gold to, Bachmann says, visibly annoyed. At the end, she had given one coin to the one-legged stable boy, one to a blind urchin, used another coin to buy pudding, gave one to me of all people, and lost the last one in a ditch. It seems that little Adeline is quite unable to make up her mind. So this is fickle by default, and then no, you must care for the poor. This should be generous, right? And bah, those poor sods are all beneath you. That would, of course, be arrogant. Yeah, indeed. So fickle, generous, and arrogant. Uh, interesting, these new events are always welcome. And here we come some, uh, to something that is even better. Let's take a look at this. The loyal and disloyal traits. King Adam of Bohemia is a Bavarian Primizlid of Bohemia. He is the king there. And he has the disloyal trait. Diplomacy minus one, intrigue plus one, liege opinion minus 15. More likely to join factions against their liege opinion of disloyal characters plus 10. Opinion of loyal characters minus 10. Where most people see a relationship, Adam sees an opportunity. And then right here we have the loyal trait. And... We don't just see that. We also... Let's just study this map. Okay. We also see a new background. Isn't that interesting? A background very specific. I, I honestly, if I have to look at it, I mean... It's a fire. You see some tent here in the background. You see the moon, of course. It could be something mystical. It could just be something because she's a wanderer. It, it is quite likely. It is quite possible, I think. Man, and she has a, she has a, bunch, of, a bunch of Finnish lifestyle traits, huh? But yeah, very interesting. Um, I, I don't know what this is for, but take note that there is new outside art. Quite interesting. Quite interesting indeed. Uh, she is loyal, and that means diplomacy plus one, liege opinion plus 15, less likely to join factions against the liege, opinion of loyal characters plus 10, and opinion of disloyal characters minus 10. Sevilla, uh, Sevilla takes her relations more seriously than most. So now we have those two. What does it mean? Last but not least for today is the addition of two new traits with the upcoming update. Through their actions, or indeed as they are subjected to the actions of others, characters can now gain traits for having loyal or disloyal personalities, which among other things will impact how likely they are to cheat on their spouse, join factions, or plot against their liege. The traits are also integrated as sins and virtues and can be more valued or common depending on cultural traditions. You Um... You could have a network of characters that are disloyal or that are loyal that then start alliances up with one another, force one another into factions and all of a sudden rise up against you or basically defend you. Somebody uh, in on a, on a different platform said, could this lead to a faction rework? Man, I would love that. I would love that so much if we genuinely got a faction rework. I don't know. 
It would be great if, for example, there were factions where disloyal characters would push towards rebellion, whereas loyal characters say we would like to negotiate instead, right? Either way, I'm very interested for what is to come. Uh, as you can see right here, this was all for today. The new update will also bring new bug fixes, event pictures, and things that I've not brought up today, but this was a sneak peek of what is to come. Next week, PDS Noodle will be talking some more about what the future will bring. Please. <laughs> I am so ready for some sort of announcement, for some sort of uh, content, feature, teasers, whatever, right? I am starved, I beg you, and I gotta tell you, this was a really good start. I can't complain about the AI stuff already, this is a big change, there's some nice positive stuff going on, but this, this is what I was hoping for, this is what I was looking forward to. These changes were all of a sudden, the roleplay potential of the game is much more interwoven than it already was. Big, big fan, let me know what you think, and I'll see you later, alligator.